All right, so I'm making this video for you, uh, hopefully just to achieve a higher quality um, video to walk through together. We can start and stop, and, uh, and I can have you guys point out your um, structures that you're noticing on yours as we go, and I think uh, ultimately it'll be a, a, a more, um, excuse me, it'll be a, a better quality uh, video experience this way. So when you're looking at, at your organ, I think the first thing that you're going to uh, notice is that the kidneys uh, shape the gross anatomy. Um, the shape, or what we call the morphology of this organ, is pretty true actually to what, um, to what we see uh, in the diagrams and in the human cadaveric dissections. This is a sheep's kidney, but you know, the things really are quite, um, they're quite true. Um, and you know, as, as you're inspecting this organ and turning it over in your hands, what I hope that you realize is that there is a, a, a specific area um, on this organ where these um, hollow structures come and go. These things in my right hand here um, are going to be the ureter, the renal artery, the renal vein, and um, they enter and exit the kidney at this region known as the hilum, which is uh, on this medial indentation is medial surface of the organ. You know, the other, the lateral and the other um, surfaces of this organ don't have those vessels uh, or structures coming and going from them. What it does have on it that you can uh, probably see on yours in, in bits and pieces is this connective tissue. Remember we talked about uh, perinephric fat and the renal capsule. You know, this tissue, when you look at it closely, you can see by and by it's transparent. Um, if you make a little nick and tent up the tent up the tissue, you'll see that this tissue surrounding the kidney, this capsule, is um, it's pretty tough. It's a little easier to separate um, than the pericardium uh, that we've uh, held and touched before, and the, or the dura mater of the um, of the brain. But but really, this can be you know removed. Um, as you, as you saw me do there, kind of trim, trim, trimmed away. The kidney itself um, is not frankly that exciting to look at from the outside. It's very homogeneous and uniform in color. Um, and then as you're looking at these structures, the uh, artery and the vein at this, at this stage before we do anything are going to be a little bit hard to see, but but the thing that I think on most of your specimens will be pretty easy to, to distinguish between is, you know, we've got blood vessels here laying across my pointer finger, and then we've got this thing that's sort of uh, encased in a little bit of fat. It's probably longer on your specimen, and it's probably a little bit lighter in color. This is going to be the ureter, um, and then up here, these are going to be the vessels. So the ureter, um, course is inferiorly towards the urinary bladder and the vessels of course more or less in a horizontal direction as they um, come and go from the aorta and the inferior vena cava respectively and even as you hold these um, vascular structures in your hands you might notice that you can actually start to see a window um, between two hollow structures I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but there's really two things here that are held together by some connective tissue, and you can start to um, use your scalpel or your scissors to um, make a make a nick in that transparent um, tissue, and you can really start to tease tease apart these two structures. In general, what you're going to see, um, let's say, on the inferior part of your screen the one that I'm going to pinch in my fingers. This one here is going to be the vein. The vein is more flat and wide and thin walled. You can feel it. This is the artery. It feels more like a piece almost of spaghetti before it's fully cooked. Um, it's smaller in diameter. It's thicker walled. It's more round than oval. Those are all characteristics of an artery. And so definitely what you're seeing uh, superiorly here. Sorry, I'm trying to get like great view. What we're seeing here, this most superior structure, I'm not sure how easy that is to see. There's the vein, I'm sorry, there's the artery superiorly, the vein here, 
and then the ureter coming off as well. So you can, um, you can separate those structures like as much as you want to as you're going toward the kidney, you know, with, with your scissors or with your pickups or with your scalpel, and you can really tease them apart. And if you wanted to, you could follow it clear all the way into the hilum um, of, the, uh, of the organ. As well, if you, um, if you inspect your ureter closely, you'll see it's really encased in a lot of fat. But if you use some of your instruments to maybe cut yourself a clean, a new clean fresh cut edge, then you're going to start to appreciate a hollow lumen. Oh, that's a great view. I hope I can get this. I'm going to just develop the lumen of the ureter a little bit so it's easy to see. You can really start to see, compared to the size of the kidney as a whole, the ureter is actually quite, uh, quite it's a quite a small structure. It's a, not a big structure, but I think you can perhaps see the lumen of the ureter um, encased in that adipose tissue. So those are all things that you need to point out and check out for yourself. Notice the difference um, in both the appearance and the feel between uh, artery and vein. You know, the difference between artery and vein intraoperatively, that means during surgery, is um, I wouldn't say it's always perfectly obvious, but it's, it's pretty obvious. There are some really consistent, reliable differences in the anatomy between, art, between arteries and veins. Um, as well, if we were um, in an operation and I gently um, took the artery between my fingers and, and gave a little bit of slight pressure and gave it a little bit of a pinch, I'd be able to feel a pulsatile flow. I'd be able to feel a pulse in this vessel, just like if I placed my hands over a radial artery. If I did that to the vein, I would not feel that. I would not feel pulsatile flow in a vein. And the differences in the pressure of those vessels, which you'd talk probably a little more about in physiology, um, their proximity to the heart and, and the fact that veins are on the other side of uh, the, proximate, the proximity of arteries to the heart and the fact that veins are on the opposite side of a, of a capillary bed in now in a way lower resistance system out in the ve venous side of things is, are some of the reasons why you're not going to feel the pulsatile um, flow through veins which of course is generated by the forceful contraction uh, and pumping of the heart. The next thing to um, um, to do is, is to hold the lateral surface of your organ facing you and, and use your uh, scalpel carefully to make an incision to, um, to divide the organ into anterior and posterior sections. And, you know, carefully making the closest, you know, to a to as perfectly equal cuts as you can. Start to make that incision all along through the superior and inferior poles of the kidneys as well as the um, lateral surface. And I like to make that, to begin that cut like that, and then use my thumb to sort of wedge it in there and hold it open. And I'm carefully coming through little, little by little and uh, opening the kidney up like a book. And I'm trying to go like millimeters at a time because as you go, and as you look inside there, you're gonna see a, you know, a color that's very similar to the outside, but eventually you're gonna be able to open the kidney enough and your dissection is going to arrive at some lighter colored, white or really light brown structures that are com completely different kind of, I'm gonna say texture than the tissue we've been coming through. And it, let's see if we can see that. Can you see that band of white tissue in there? That is some of the intact collecting system that is found, um, you know, within the kidney. And you can see those, you can see those bands of tissue that I'm coming through. And as I'm opening those up, it's going to allow me to um, carry this carry this incision down and really open this kidney like a book.
And that's kind of what we're doing. So little, little, little by little, because if you go slow, 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 then eventually you're gonna come to the, sorry, you're gonna come to the renal pelvis, which is this funnel-shaped, um, sort of this funnel-shaped confluence of all the major calyces. And, but, but we're looking at it in three dimensions now intact before um, it's been cut in half this way like we've been seeing in the diagrams. You know, and so remember these things we're looking at are three-dimensional structures, 2D, ob 2D cartoons of 3D structures, right? And so let me see uh, if I can keep kind of developing this decision and get us a view. Really the important thing here is to go little by little by little. What I really want to point out to you here, let me get my, um, clear that off a little bit. Let's see how that looks on our camera. What I really want to point out to you here is uh, underneath my pickups right here, there is a, a, hol a small hollow structure joining this larger joining this larger collecting system. That would be um, like a minor calyx entering uh, into, or really minor and major calyces sort of blending or joining together to form this larger renal pelvis. When you look at your cut edge of your um, specimen, you know the, the renal pyramids are here. They are not as um, they are not as obvious as uh, in the textbook, but you can see a corticomedullary junction. That's the boundary between cortex here, the tip, and medulla right there. You can as well in certain areas see these extensions of corti cortical tissue extending towards from um, superficial towards deep or from the periphery towards the renal pelvis. And depending on your, uh, those those renal columns, and depending on your uh, location of your incision, you can really start to see something like this. Can you see how there's a, a really a natural separation between these tissues here? These, these sort of cracks that have formed are, are not something that I, um, that I did with my scalpel. There's a, a, nor, a normal, natural anatomic difference between the um, what we call the parenchyma of the kidney which is this all the cells of the kidney itself all the cells of the cortex and the medulla there's a natural separation between that tissue in the collecting system and so I'm gonna sort of get a little bit aggressive with my dissection and I'm gonna on this side of it I'm just gonna peel away some of that tissue I called the parenchyma, some of the um, pyramids and, and even some of the cortex to expose the collecting system just so that we can get an appreciation for the, um, and you don't have to do this to yours yet if you don't want to mess it up, or maybe you can do it at the end. But I just want to show you how, you know, how the collecting system of this organ, which is this, looks almost like an octopus or a or a, or a star or something like that with this central large hollow area and all of these radiating um, you know these radiating um, structures that are joining to form this larger renal pelvis if we open this up and it's a little bit hard on a uh, this is the part that that honestly is hard on the uh, sheep's kidney just because of its small and the and its size of its preservation but if you incise or, or make an incision, that large um, renal pelvis, then you would be looking into that hollow structure, which ultimately collects all the urine produced by this kidney and drains into, or I should say drains out of the ureter. And I think, frankly, it's pretty difficult the way these are um, preserved. It's pretty difficult to, you know, find the, 
sorry, to find the um, entrance of the ureter to the renal pelvis. And so I wouldn't get too frustrated um, if you can't find that. I, well, actually, look at this. Just by pure luck, <laughs> honestly. Just by pure luck, I was able to weasel my pickups down and into the ureter, and so I'm gonna incise the ureter from the inside out. You can see even the, well, I don't know if you can see, but you can almost see the tip of my instrument through the tissue. But I made a little nick with my scalpel over it, and you can see the tips of my pickups coming out through the lumen of the ureter, which is larger. The lumen of the ureter is larger close to the kidney, and it narrows as you go farther away. So, um, you know, again, hilum, hilar structures like ureter, renal artery, and renal vein, um, and the medial surface of the kidney, opening it up, we can see an outer, slightly lighter color cortex, inner uh, medulla, which has been partitioned off into pyramids as the cortex sort of separates it by renal columns. There's a central, um, collecting system, which is uh, formed as these little minor calyces uh, surround the tips of the uh, pyramids, the tips of the renal medulla called the renal papilla. These minor calyces surround them and collect the urine that's produced there, um, just like a gutter collects rainwater. And those small minor calyces join together with neighboring minor calyces to form larger major calyces which unite to form this single central large funnel called the renal pelvis that ultimately narrows down into a tube carrying the urine away. That tube is the ureter. Um, the, the, um, the separation between the pyramids and the uh, in the collecting system is just, it, it's just an existing normal anatomic plane. You just, with a little bit of pressure like this, you can separate those things um, and, 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 uh, and sort of start to dissect further and inspect that. Um, and, uh, and then if you're lucky, uh, you, you can even see where that um, ureter, uh, where the renal pelvis becomes the ureter, but that view is a difficult one to it's difficult to see that view. Um, the way that these specimens are produced. All right, so we'll start and stop this video together and we'll take a few minutes and look at your guys' specimens and see some of those structures too.